Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It's Weekly Energy. We're talking about the astrology for the forthcoming week. And today, this video, we're talking about the week of April 17th through the 23rd. Um, the week starts off after a weekend with the moon in Pisces. So a dreamy weekend. How was your weekend? Reflect on that for a second. Um, also, you know, Friday was a moon in Aquarius. So did you spend your weekend socializing? Did you uh, find time to connect with others? Did you um, go deep into uh, dreamland? Did you connect with your dreams or did you connect with your um, intuition or even your desires? Because we're starting this week, coming off of that weekend with the moon in um, Aries. And it'll be there for the new moon that's happening this week as well. So a brand new cycle is beginning and it's our second consecutive new moon in Aries. So I think that this week is giving us a lot of second chance energy. And that's supported by the Mercury retrograde too because we are in the Mercury retrograde Mer we are in the Mercury retrograde shadow. And maybe you feel this already that some things are changing or some things feel like on the precipice of um, changing or wanting to change. You have a chance to do things differently. I think if we're revisiting, re-examining things from the past, and it doesn't have to be the deep past, like, oh, you know, some regret you have from a decade or two ago. I mean, maybe if it's still like around for you, but more so I think that this is like a the breath of fresh air or, or some some life getting blown into given into like a project or a relationship or a situation that you wish could go differently and so look at what's in your control which is you your own behaviors your own patterns um, this is the second chance energy of this week that I'm feeling. Yes, yeah, Saturn, sextile node, overcoming challenges, high standards for working consistently. I think we're going to be holding us, ourselves, to a higher standard, definitely. Uh, yeah, and the new moon is in Aries on Wednesday, the 20th, or is that Thursday? I think that's Thursday. Um, in 29 degrees, the final, final degree of Aries. It's like right there before it crosses over into Taurus. So if you're doing new moon ritual, do it that morning. I mean, you know, don't wait too long, I would say. You could do it the night before. I do for moon, new moons, I do in the morning. So you could do it in the morning there. And if you don't have a new moon ritual and you want to do one, this very simplest thing you can do is just write down a list of your intentions of things you'd like to devote your energy and commitment to that you would like to see grow. It doesn't have to be super complicated. Uh, ritual can be a practical and mundane experience at the same time and still extremely effective. All right. There's a lot of healing and soothing potential here. Renewal and preparation, transformation, incubation. Yeah. So what have you been sitting on for a while? I feel like you've had the ideas. I feel like you've had the insight over the course of the beginning of this year. And I think you're ready to do something differently. Uh, let's see here. Mercury retrograde. Mercury stations retrograde in Taurus at the same time that Venus uh, transits Lilith. Venus, the planet of beauty. Lilith, the planet of... Oh, planet. Lilith, it's called a black moon. Lilith is kind of uh, like a dangerous lady. You know, she represents all that is repressed, all that is like... She's kind of like an anarchist in my mind, but her, her energy, I think, comes from a place of like being an outsider or not being totally accepted by community or society. And so what does it mean for Venus, the planet of beauty and love, to be in, in a harmonious um, transit with Lilith at the same time that Mercury grows retrograde? I think we're willing we've got to be more willing to embrace those denied aspects of ourself and b bring those around to um, some sort of loving awareness that this is a valid piece of you. This is a valid part of you regardless of what somebody else is saying. 
Okay, so the Mercury retrograde could be restructuring or shuffling um, things, um, things like, you know, material things, material resources, objects, money, food, environmentalism, resources, it, like literally a Taurus sort of rules all those things with the second house. How do those things connect with your desire? Um, so you see that there is a stage being built for the presentation and for the, um, you know, so it's, everything is feeling a little bit more welcoming now. I think people are starting to be more willing to be themselves, uh, caring less about what other people think. Um, and even if uh, you're the kind of person who can't totally uh, remove the opinions of others from your brain space, um, at the very least, if it's still, if that chatter is still in there, hopefully you are still finding ways to move forward sort of on your own terms, um, outside of the purview of others, because, you know, seeing in perception is another thing that is coming to me now. It's not fully developed, but I feel like that is a theme we're going to be talking about very soon here, like this idea of being perceived. And at some point we do become comfortable enough to be perceived um, with fully with our desires intact but I don't think that that's um it's not the first step right like I didn't start this channel right away I started it once I felt that it was the next step to my growth as a reader and in like my my, my astrology studies right but if I was trying to learn while doing this, like opening myself to be perceived, there may be more challenges, right? So that's not what what's showing here is um, we're not doing things to be perceived doing them. Or maybe we are, you know, like if, if that's you, then look at that and ask that question. Am I doing something because... I want to be seen doing this versus I'm doing this because it is a true passion or desire of mine and I would do it even if nobody else supported me in doing it. Lilith. Okay. Yeah, I think that this is going to feel very positive. This is going to feel very expressive. Like maybe you're going to want to talk about something that you've never done before or something that you've been wanting to do or wanting to try etc. You know, I think we're coming around to the idea of expanding our horizons. This is, in some ways, feels like a ch sec taking a second chance on one's self. There was a really great exercise that I did with Anna Kristall, it, who runs retreats in Sedona. Um, I love this exercise. It was, oh, here's my affirmation mirror. I'm glad I put that there. I didn't realize this was going to come up for me right now, but the energy of this week feels like this. You got your affirmations mirror. You're just, just, just a mirror. And you say, I totally love and accept myself. You find yourself in a place of safety and belonging. And the part that I really re think resonates for this video for this week is there is so much more to learn about me. There's so much more to learn about me me this is also like a beginner's mind but you're like taking that lens back on yourself the beginner's mind you can put on your like thinking cap your curiosity cap about the world around you and look at things in a brand new light especially if things are stagnating a bit you can do that on yourself and I think that's what this week wants us to do you know um the so yeah the next moon will be in Gemini very chatty very expressive with a Gemini moon, maybe we want to find others who feel similarly uh, that we do or just that share similar ideas. So is it time for a workshop? Is it time for a meetup? Is it time for, you know, who knows? I think this is totally up to you. Just be open with yourself. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. We're not doing a tarot reading today. I'm trying a few different things on the channel. So if you want a tarot card reading, just go ahead and flip through the other videos on my channel and pick one that resonates for you. All right. Thanks.